welcome to my channel. I am Tracy Reed, and this is Acrylic Pouring with Friends. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Today's video is really fun for me because I am doing one of my most favorite techniques, and that is the cloud pour technique, and I will be using my cloud pour cup. So, for those of you that are new to my channel and you don't know, I have an Etsy shop with all of my um, 3D printed acrylic pouring tools. And this is one that is one of my favorite cups that I have designed. Um, like I said, it's for Cloud Pour, um, the Cloud Pour technique specifically. It was designed with chambers in the front of the cup that hold your Cloud Pour mix. Now, the cool thing about these chambers is there's two of them in the front, and you can kind of customize how you, you know, how much cloud you want. So you can use a whole chamber, you can use both of them, you know, you don't have to use both, just one. Sometimes what I like to do and what I'm doing in today's video is I'm going to alternate uh, the cloud mix and I'll show you, you know, that in a little bit. Um, but this is designed so that you have a main chamber. This also comes in split, split cup too, <laughs> um, multiple varieties of this cup. But the one I'm using is the open, the main open chamber. Um, the paint comes out here and kind of creates like a pillow on your canvas. And then the cloud pour mix will come out onto that pillow. And it kind of helps um, with the creation of your clouds. And um, it's it's perfect. I love this cup. I'm very proud of it. So I get to show you how to use it in today's video. So now I'm going to go over the colors that I've chosen. The first one is a metallic cobalt. It's just gorgeous, and I used a couple different colors or paints with that. Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt, and then Blick Studio Acrylics Metallic Teal. I also use, or I also have in this one here, bottle, is uh, Soho Alizarin and Crimson. I've got some orange here, and it is from Liquitex Basics Cadmium Red Light Hue. Let's see, the gold that I'm using, I mixed two colors together, Deco Art 24 Karat Gold, and then I took some Folk Art Champagne um, and mixed that in to lighten it. Sometimes, if you guys have used the Deco Art 24 Karat Gold, I love it, it's my favorite gold, but sometimes I kind of want to just tamp it down a bit, so I did that this time. Um, you can kind of see in my bottles here the difference in the golds there. So I just wanted to bring it down a notch. <laughs> and then the purple that I've got is um, dioxazine purple. I don't have my bottle, but I'm assuming that it's probably Liquitex Basics uh, for that one. And then I've got two other paints that I'm going to be using. Uh, this one here, let me just grab the bottles, is uh, from the Fine Touch, and it is Thalo Turquoise. And then I mixed it with some golden uh, fluid acrylics turquoise. And I'm going to use this one as my puddle color. And then, if needed, which I probably will, I have um, Liquitex Basics Prism Violet, which will be my paint that I put around the puddle. It's a flow, like a flow extender. kind of helps so your colors don't kind of wrap around as I'm tilting. And then, lastly, I have my cloud mix. And I'm going to go over really quick my recipe. I'm not going to mix it. I, I've done a few mixing videos. So I'm just going to show you what I use. And I use bare satin enamel paint and primer in one. It is the um, ultra pure white. And then I also use Vallejo Pearl Medium. And let me see. I've got... Golden GAC 800 and Floetrol that I put in there. So I'll go over the parts really quick for you. So I use two parts bare satin enamel to one part Vallejo Pro Medium. And then I put in a tablespoon of Golden GAC 800. And two parts of Floetrol. Let me see where my jug is. Here it is. Um, two parts of Floetrol. And a little bit of water to 
uh, your consistency. And usually for the water, I usually use, uh, let me see, like this is my water bottle. I'll usually use maybe two cup, two little capfuls um, of water. And then that's it. And I usually make it in a big jug amount. Um, because I, well, because I used to use, do a ton of cloud pours. I've kind of uh, do a little bit more techniques now, but um, that's how I always do it. So the part that you use is going to depend on how much you need. All right, so I'm going to get my gloves on and get started. All right, guys, so I have got all the caps off of my bottles, and I've got my cup ready. I also have an order of how I want to put my paint in, trying to make sure that I layer it um, a certain way, I guess. You know, everybody's different about how they like their paints layered. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start filling the um, front cloud mix chambers. And I'm going to start with the cloud mix on one side. And I find it best when filling the cloud pour chambers, the cloud mix chambers, to use a um, squeeze bottle because they're a little bit, um, you know, smaller to get in there. So I'm going to go about halfway on the one side on the bottom and then I've taken some of my cobalt, metallic cobalt mix and put it in a smaller cup um, because that one was a separate one that I made special for this and I don't have it in a squeezy bottle. So this is a little bit easier to, to do also. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump that in there. And I usually fill it to the very bottom of the this spout. And it is a little bit hard sometimes to see in there, so you just kind of wing it. It's not going to matter if you go a little bit above. All right, so then I'm going to fill the other side with the metallic cobalt on the on the bottom of this side and I'm just gonna fill the rest in I think that's enough for this cup <laughs> yeah that looks pretty good so far in there okay and then now I'm just going to take my cloud mix and fill it up the rest of the way. I'm going to turn it so I can see it in the light a little bit better. There we go. All right, and that looks pretty good. Okay, and now, um, let's see, we'll just do it this way. So, I guess here we go. I'm going to start with the purple on the bottom and all of my colors my paints are mixed with my regular pouring medium, ex except for the recipe for my cloud mix, which is Liquitex pouring medium, Floetrol, water, um, and there's some golden GAC 800, GAC 800 ugh, <laughs> as well. And I'm, when I'm layering these, some of these colors will have a tendency to muddy. So, you can see that I'm putting a dividing color between them. That way that there's less chance that that will happen. Now, it's not always a guarantee, so we'll see. <laughs> um, but it's, it's just fun to see what happens. So I'm trying, trying my best to avoid the muddy. And also, when you do a pour like this, any type of ring pour, you want to make sure that your colors are a little bit thicker than you would use for a Dutch pour or something like that because you want them to hold the, the shape. You want them to have defined uh, lines. So that should help. That's, that's one of the, a couple of the things that, um, I use some of the ways I avoid muddy pores. And I actually did a video on that a while back. I can link that one um, in the description if I remember. <laughs> Hopefully I'll remember that. All right, 
right, I'm almost done. I want to finish this off. Now I'm going a little bit. I usually just go to the bottom of the spout, but I want to finish this off with the purple. And it's just going to be a little bit above that, so no big deal. But there we go. And that's, that's pretty good. All right, so I'm going to move this really quick, and then I am going to put my, where is it, the um, turquoise down as a puddle first. I haven't done a puddle in a while. I usually just dump it on, but I thought I would just give it a puddle this time. It actually helps it flow a little bit better, and... I'm just going to do that just a little bit. And I did shake that one. I don't know why I shook that one. So there's a few air bubbles in there. So I'm just going to get those popped as much as possible. Hazel doesn't like that. You can still see a few, but, you know, sometimes you can't help it. All right. So now I have got my cup full <laughs> and I am ready to go. that right up to the edge there you don't want to go over it it's gonna help your colors flow better without them going underneath pulling pulling themselves under if that makes any sense that wrap the colors will wrap under and because they're sticking to the dry canvas Thank you. 
right, everybody, here we go with the dried photos, and I think it dried really, really good. The um, colors blended really nice. I did lose a lot of my orange. Now I tried to save it at the bottom. You can see there's kind of like a rainbow down there, so I like that. And the clouds came out just amazing. The colors came through the cloud mix, which I love. So if you guys are having trouble getting uh, nice cloud pours, this cup that I used in my video today is amazing and it really will help you make a, a beautiful cloud pour painting. I would love to hear what you guys think, so don't forget to leave me a comment below. Also don't forget to like my video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel to go ahead and subscribe now. Make sure to hit the notification bell also, that way you're notified when I upload new videos. And if you're interested in the cloud pour cup I used in my video today, go ahead and check out acrylicpouringtools.com. It's there along with all of my other acrylic pouring tools. All right, guys, I hope you have a great day, and I have a bunch more videos that I know you will enjoy, and I'll catch you in the next one.